Hey everybody, and welcome to the Labyrinth of Limitations. This is another little labyrinth where we're talking about um, just some small things to practice and we're moving to something bigger, which is making beautiful contrapuntal lines with two voices. So um, we're gonna stay in G minor six. And um, we're, we talked about thirds, so now we're gonna talk about six. And talking about six, you can practice everything you did on thirds. I'm gonna skip over most of those things. Um, but, you know, go up the strings, you know, real quick, I'll do that. Um, so that's each string. Take some getting used to. You know, you gotta practice it. Just like with thirds, you got to watch out for the funny interval. So where I paused there was I was thinking, because uh, right here is a minor seventh. Just like in the thirds, it might be a, um, a minor second. That's uh, the funny interval that results from the scalar sixth is the minor seventh. Here's another one. Okay, so. Now, um, so two things that I would add to what we talked about practicing the thirds, just when looking at just six on G minor six or any other scale. One is doing low, high, high, low. So that means I take some pattern like this, and I go, I can keep going with that. position is important and keeping in mind that the uh, the six the uh, six intervals in these in this scale in any scale um, can, you can play them on adjacent strings or you can play them on non-adjacent strings so there's two options right so that's something to, to keep in mind so I did like uh, something like right there I went to adjacent strings for that one so that I can stay in position So um, that's something to keep in mind. Another thing to practice then is to surround the notes of the main chord, in this case, G minor six, and the diminished is surrounding it. So here's a G minor six interval, and I'm going to go below it for diminished, and above it, and then back to G minor six. So it's, and I'm gonna go to this, this is the third and the fifth, sorry, the third and the root, so I go, Is a fun thing to do and you can do variations on that so here is you know stuff like that so I did three diminished in a row what was that you know I just didn't I plan on that exactly but that was nice so it's diminished 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 and then diminished and then you know stuff like that is pretty um, but now what we really want to get into is we want to talk about uh, switching between third and sixth. So we're going to want to keep in mind a little melodic principle. It's not a rule or anything you have to worry about, um, you know, breaking or rebelling against or anything like that. It's just a tendency of kind of tonal coherence of, of glue that makes things kind of make sense to our ears. And that is that melodies tend to move by steps as a norm so there's tons of examples of them being very disjunct. Um, and uh, when they do leap, they tend to follow that leap by a step in the opposite direction. It's just a tendency in the kind of background thinking of melodies, you could say. So what that means is, say, a classical piece. I just did a bunch of steps and one leap, and then I fill in fill in in the opposite direction. And then after doing that twice, it does this. So it goes 
it jumps up, and then it steps. Right. So that is um, the tendency that we're thinking about. So there's some tricks. There's some little rules I can give you, kind of like um, uh, Barry Harris's rules. And speaking of which, if you do pivoting, if you looked at Chris's uh, wonderful things I learned from Barry Harris channel, which I'm sure you all are, um, he just recently talked about pivoting again, which is where you take something like this. So that's uh, doing a little four note seven chords in a D7 scale. So now I'm going to go. I'm going to go. And what I do, I'm, I'm what I'm doing is I'm leaping down and filling in the space with the arpeggio. Right. Right. So when I go. I do, and I do this line, you know, I do this, that's, but, so it's following the same principle, a lot of that in this bebop type line stuff. So now, moving into it then, if you're descending with thirds, and that's my background idea, but I want to switch to sixth, when descending from thirds to six, I think of the bottom line as the glue. So. And that makes my top line jump and then move in the opposite direction. So I go, all of those work. All of those work, okay? So then if I'm going from six to thirds at the opposite, I think of my top line. So it's, And then opposite, it's the opposite. So when I'm going up in my line, I am now, when doing thirds, going to six, I'm gonna think of the top line. So it's, so thirds to six. So that was thinking of my top line, just keeping. But I'm, oops, sorry. And then now, if I'm going from six to thirds, I think of my bottom line. So six to thirds, and then my bottom one. Okay. Now, if I'm going to shift directions at any point, I'm going to think of whatever the new direction is. What I mean is, uh, say I'm going to go from thirds to six, but right when I go to the six, that first six, I'm going to start going upwards. I'm going to think of the rule for going upwards. So thirds going down, and then, and now I'm going to go. See, I went upwards in my melodic line. It was like I was doing this. I'm going to think of my top voice because that's the rule for ascending is when going from thirds to six. Ascending, I think of my top voice. But if I were to keep going down instead of doing this, whoops. If I were to do, well, I would think of my bottom voice. these you know you have to those little rules so again thirds to six um, descending you're gonna think of your bottom voice uh, six to thirds when descending in a line you're gonna think of your top voice uh, thirds to six ascending uh, you just flip the rule for going up you know and then um, and just think of whatever you know is the next note you're moving to for the rule so if you're going down but then you switch from thirds to six but at the exact same time you start moving up you need to think of the rule for going up. And that's it, um, thirds to six. We're gonna move on to uh, uh, adding fifths next time and that will let us bridge from thirds to six, which will be nice instead of just going, going, I can go two for next episode. So thank you so much for joining me and it's fun to do these little ones and um, uh, and there will be more big ones uh, with PDFs and stuff, but uh, uh, this is where I'm at with these. And I think it's a good conversation to have. 
and uh, keep practicing.